What up, everybody? Welcome to the Masters of Evil live podcast. Hey, everybody. I'm Mike, a.k.a. Strange Spaceman. I'm joined with the boys. Tom, Tom Gillespian. It's Alan, your wizard. How are you doing down there, Alan? Yeah, are you hungry again? or I legit just woke up from a nap. Oh. <laughs> like 10 minutes ago. Jealous. I just ate a big pile of enchiladas and drank some margaritas, so I'm like either going to have a heart attack or fall asleep. I don't know. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> <laughs> they feel the same sometimes. <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> uh, so, um, that yeah, intro so- is very loud. It is pretty loud. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta throw, I gotta throw that back on and and uh, and uh, adjust the levels, as they say in the in the biz. <clears throat> um, <laughs> so, uh, w- welcome, guys. Welcome back to the podcast or live show, whatever we're calling it. Um, yeah, every week we pick a random book to talk about, and uh, this week we picked um, "I Killed Giants," which is a seven issue miniseries. It was uh, it was published in two thousand eight by Image Comics. It was written by Joe Kelly, and um, and art by J M Ken Nimura, who I thought just uh, because of the style of this book and by that last name that he was possibly of some type of Asian descent, but uh, he's not. Dude's from Spain. So second uh, second week in a row or second time ever we're doing this that we have a, a European artist which is pretty cool so did they, uh, did they comment on our uh, YouTube page or no yeah they didn't <laughs> I, don't, I think oh no these guys no I don't Not think so good. although Joe Kelly did like the post because I tagged him in it nice. yeah so that's pretty cool that's a fun little thing when you pop into Instagram and you see that kind of stuff so We'll take the little wins. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so what do you guys think about the book? Overall thoughts? Let's uh, give us a give us a breakdown on the book, Mike. I think you're, you're probably best well-versed on this one uh, between yeah. the three of us since you've read it once before today. Yeah. But, you know. I, uh, I actually think this might – when I, I started reading through this, I uh, – I thought I thought to myself, and I was like, you know what? I might have read this more than once before. Um, it was one of those things that was like in the back of my head, and then I, I couldn't recall a single moment from it. And the second I cracked the book open, I was like, I remember everything that happened in this book. So yeah, this book is um, "I Kill Giants," and um, it is uh, I, it, it is um, it is a very interesting book in regard to art style and. Uh, and um, just the overall genre, it it starts off feeling like it's kind of a almost like a, a YA book. You know, it, it's got that feeling. You know, a young girl in school being bullied, picked on. She wears the uh, bunny ears. Like, what's her name from uh, Bob's Burgers? Louise. She's Louise. Yeah, I knew you would call, you would uh, correct me on that. <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, it, it it's pretty much starts. It's a story of a little girl who's going through some tough times, right? She's being bullied in school. She doesn't get along with her sister. And, you know, you, you find out there's, there's some other things going on at home. You know, her mother's really sick. And she lives in this fantasy world um, where she is a, a – she kills giants. She slays giants. She hunts and kills them. And she is it, – it is very fantasy-driven. You know, uh, I think Alan called out earlier. There's, you know, people playing D&D in the, in the background and stuff. And, um, you know, ultimately it's really just a story about her dealing with – with loss and, and dealing with coming in terms with that loss. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's comedic. It's, it's the art style is got that manga esque look to it, all black and white, you know? Um, and then it just tears your fucking heart out at the end. <laughs> um, so I don't, <clears throat> what, what were your thoughts? No, I was just gonna say I didn't. I couldn't really see at first where it was going. Um, I also had a TV on in the background while I was reading it, and that probably wasn't helping me. But um, 
it threw me a couple ways. I was like, oh, <laughs> this, this is just a book about this kid who likes D&D because the first issue tells you absolutely nothing until it comes down to the giants and you see her play D&D and you're like, oh, okay, she's just make-believing this whole fantasy world kind of thing with D&D. And then it kind of veered off of D&D a bit and started talking about some other things. And I, I'll be totally honest, and I think Alan and I talked about this just a tiny little bit. Um, the first three issues or so out of the seven-issue series, um, there was not a lot exciting for us. Um, we were kind of confused. I, I wasn't really sure where the book was going to go. It was just kind of happening. Um, I, I do enjoy the small kid stories where, you know, you have the underdog and they've got to overcome something and that kind of thing. So that part of it um, was nice. Um, but again, I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen. And then, yeah, the last two issues, at least, if not the last three, um, really drilled home uh, what the story was about. And like you said, it was definitely um, about her coming to the realization that her mom is sick and her mom's going to die, but it's okay because everything dies and you have to realize that life is what you should be celebrating. So if your mom is still alive, you celebrate with her as much as possible before she is gone. You know, just dreading the fact that your mom is sick and is going to pass away or something to that extent is just going to make the entire time she is alive pointless, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting what you said. Like the first, I think you had mentioned that, like, or I had said in the chat or something. Like, it, it's it's the last two issues that make this this series, and like, <clears throat> I think that was it's one of those books when you I, and obviously speaking like, like I said, I, this is my second or third time around with it. When I dove into it at the beginning, knowing like what was going on in this book, it made it. Um, like it made her seem like at some parts way more badass than she, I thought she was at the, at, you know, the first time around, but also at the same time, I just saw like just all the pain. Like it was just very visceral and right there. Yeah. It was, it was sad. <laughs> that happened with me you watching the movie directly after reading the book, because I had a feel for how things play out and things like that. And then watching like an actual person reenact these things and seeing the hurt when she's just trying to be understood and you know things like that on her face um that really got me more than uh maybe like i mentioned to you the the manga-esque like scotty young kind of looking art combination there it didn't really um that style didn't really pull on my heartstrings just visually you know i couldn't necessarily uh, catch the emotion as well, I guess, is one way I would put it. But, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed the book overall. <laughs> yeah. You awake down there, Alan? Yeah, what's it? Yeah, hey, what did you uh, think? Uh, I could have just watched the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I, I like waited till the very last, I mean, I waited till today to read it. So, um, I was like, damn, why didn't I just watch the movie twice? And whenever I so I, I didn't know like what the title like what the like the cover of the book looked like until today. So whenever I first saw like the title of the movie, I was like, "Yo, this is gonna be fucking tight," because the like the the cover of the movie looks a lot different than anything that happens in the movie or in the book. So I was like, "Yo, this is gonna be cool." Started watching it, and I was like, "Damn, I I feel like a thirteen year old girl." <laughs> Like it was, it was definitely not what I expected because it, I was thinking of more like you're going to see more fighting with, you know, her. I, I almost had like this image of her of looking like, um, what's the fucking girl from um, the X Men? Um, she's she was in the New Mutants movie. Fucking oh, magic. Oh, yeah. magic? In, in my mind, I had her looking like almost like a magic character because of the cover of the movie. I was like, cool, she's you're going to see her in armor, and she doesn't have this fucking big old hammer. Like, and then right. when you actually see it, it's just this little girl with the hammer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely not like magic at all. <laughs> but, I mean, it was, it, it was good. I, I did like the... Uh, what were the the things that kind of like came and told her that like the giants were close? I really like those in in the in the movie as well. Um, the harbingers, yeah, the harbingers looked really cool. Yeah, I really liked the way. I mean, the, the movie was shot really well because I think it was like what the from the producer of uh, Harry Potter or whatever. 
Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, the movie was done really well. Like, it was, uh, it was a really good movie. Yeah, the, art, I, the art in the book was okay. I didn't love it, but I didn't absolutely hate it either. Yeah, this is definitely um, that dude's style. Like, if you go look at his IG or any of the other stuff he does, he's like, like you said, like that Scotty Young, like he's got a very definitive style and it's very cutesy anime ma manga like style uh but i i uh i like the little bits and pieces like that like the random like pieces like in this where you like you were talking about the harbingers where like when you first look at the page maybe you have to like look again because you're like yeah. oh that's just her imagination right like there's always like a, a pixie flying around somewhere or or like uh, some like kind of far out shit and uh I, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I read a lot of manga, so like this is right up my alley. <laughs> well, it really has that feel too because it's all in yeah. black and white. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, and it's and it, yeah, even the way a lot of the panels are done, they just have that very like tons of lines and just like very a lot of action going on. Like even when someone's just sitting there, they open their eyes and it's just like ah, action lines everywhere, you know? Like, <laughs> It's just definitely got that feel. And like I said, I think that's what uh, kind of took me out of some of more of the emotional aspects of the, the book um, until the end. And I like pieced everything together, you know, um, of where the name of the hammer came from and why why she named it that and you know, uh, how much it meant to her, her mom. And, you know, um, like, I know you have a panel queued up of the, uh, the Harbingers behind her mom um, in, in the book. And uh, yeah. I remember seeing this, this was slightly earlier on, right? Yeah. Or was, yeah. And yeah, so I, I mean, right before that, you have like, you have this where she's like fighting with trying to get up the stairs, right? She's terrified of what's up there. And then when she gets up there, this is what she sees, you know? Right. And yeah. I didn't like when I, I didn't process that as like being her mom or anything. I was like, oh, there's some just weird shit up there. And she's got to <laughs> figure out how to take care of it, you know, that kind of thing. And I was like, all right. And then so I think that's why the end hit me as hard as it did when I realized that she just was sad to see her mom dying. You know, I, I've had family members in hospital beds in my home that I didn't want to go see because I didn't want to see them like that anymore. You know, I don't want to remember them like that. And I, I think that was a, a, a feeling she had knowing her mom was going to pass. She didn't want that being her mom, you know? Yeah. Yeah, right. You, you always want to have this image of the person, like even if it's <clears throat> like – you know, if it's like, I, I don't know, for me, it would be like my grandfather or something. But like, I, when I think about my grandfather, I think about him from when I was a fucking five years old, when he was like, still like active, like, a, you know, seemed like a much, you know, more of a sturdier human, not like right before he died when he was 98 years old. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a definitely, I mean, she, you see it all throughout the entire book. I mean, it's, it's just like, she's terrified of everyone, but she's, I think like what I loved about it is she's just, she's a fucking wise ass. She's smart as hell. Yeah. She's smart as hell. She's like talking back to everybody. She's not scared of anything. Like she's not that typical, like, you know, I get bullied and cower and like put my head down and, she like stand up to the bullies and hits them and punches them back and like scraps. You know what I mean? I mean, she, she, she goes to see the school psychiatrist and ends up slapping her. <laughs> like yeah. she has no, no remorse. And I, I mean, it's obvious why she's that way. And you know, at the end, she flat out told one of the bullies that she, she's like, I will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, the movie is on Hulu. If you guys want to watch it, that's where I watched it today. I thought it was on Netflix, and I checked, and it wasn't there. But Hulu I it was on Netflix also. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I might have said it was on Netflix. But, there you yeah, I thought I saw it on Netflix. So I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'm gonna watch it on Netflix." And then I couldn't find it, and I was like, "Oh damn!" And I searched it through my my uh, my TV, and it was like it's on Amazon Prime. Then I had to pay for it, and then. 
my girlfriend found it on Hulu, and I was like, cool, I already downloaded it, so fuck now. <laughs> now I have this movie times too. That's funny. So I think like one of my favorite things was like the first, I, and I think Alan, you you like posted this of like, um, I think it's the first and second page maybe or yeah. close to it where she's uh, she gets this purse, you know, this heart shaped purse. I think it's it's you can presume that she this has this was her mother's or her mother gave it to her. I don't think they really say either way, but um, and she's like, you know, sewing the hammer into the front of it. And then she sticks her finger with this with the sewing needle and just like a, you know, just puts in blood this uh, what looks like a pea, but I presume is just the you know the hammer. Right, and, yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, it's just I don't know. After you posted it, I like went back and looked at it and read it a couple times and just saw what she was saying. You know, it's just you know take the force of my enemy and and bend it back. It's just like she's. She's a little badass. She's brutal. <laughs> it was good. I, I I mean, I wouldn't read it again, to be completely honest. <laughs> I, it, it just, I mean, it, it's it, to me, it felt like more of like a uh, like a teen like, graphic novel. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Towards, I mean, it definitely has like a <clears throat> a deeper once you get into it and you understand, you know, why she is the way that she is, but. I was just like, man, I wanted some armor, and the fucking hammer was kind of weird whenever you see the hammer, and it was just like, I don't know. The fight was kind of very underwhelming with the, yeah. the Titan. I was like, that's eh, okay. It, I mean, it was it, it was good for what it was. It wasn't... This guy? Yeah. The Titan looked cool. I think the Titan doesn't... looked a lot cooler in the book than it actually did in the movie. Yeah, it was pretty badass, I thought. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's... um. It's, it is definitely a, I guess would be classified as like a YA graphic novel. Um, it's uh, probably aimed at, at, at a younger audience. And I'd be interested, you know, I, I didn't read any interviews or anything about what Joe Kelly said about this, but I'd be interested what, 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 uh, if any, he, you know, if he had like kids when he was writing this or something like that, or if this connects with him in some way. I didn't realize uh, how old the book was at this point, um, being published in 2008, until I started looking back actually at Joe Kelly's Instagram and going through, and I'm like, I can't find a damn thing about this book. Like, why wouldn't he talk about it? And then, you know, I'm like creeper status where I'm 250 <laughs> weeks into his Instagram, you know, accidentally liking a page or something. And um, finding all the different uh, publications that are still happening, like not even three years ago, it just got published out in like Germany or Portugal or something um, for the first time. And so after all this time, it's uh, it's still being published in different places and being picked up. And, and I think that's really cool, especially because the movie's only what two years ago, sixteen. Yeah, it was, it was very recent, and it is a live action movie, which. Uh, <laughs> which uh, is interesting choice because I would have thought they would go with animated for how animated of a series this is. Yeah. And it has like Gamora is the uh, actress that plays the psychologist. Yep. Um, the little girl that plays the main character is fantastic. Her acting is oh, really, yeah. really funny. And she's a little shithead. Like she's, she's great. Her little best friend is a really good job. Like everyone in it is fantastic. And it is like almost panel for panel the comic because like i said after reading all seven issues last night and then watching the movie today during work hours so don't tell anybody um <laughs> i like could pick up the lines from the book in they were in, in my head and i could hear them using them like line for line in so many instances in that book in that movie it was crazy yeah it was uh it was definitely spot on <clears throat> I um I I lo I haven't I watched it when it first came out because I remember like I don't know, I read this book a long time ago and um I remember it popping up and I'm just like is this really like what I think it is or is this just like happenstance that it, there's some movie coming out on Hulu or Netflix or whatever it was that's uh, got this name <laughs> and I was like oh no wait this is written by Joe Kelly so he wrote and like 
produced this the the movie so i mean it, you know that makes a lot of sense of why it was like literally panel to panel the same exact thing yeah and you may not get that so frequently when you option your movies to other people you know being able to it's like a Rick Remender situation with Deadly Class, which is yeah. our next book. Yeah. Um, he he wrote a lot of that series, the actual TV series. Yeah. And so you get a lot of the same shit going through that, and uh, it's really cool to see. Yeah, and I mean, anytime you have, like, something extended like that, you know, like, he's he started writing that book it's or started writing that series. There were, like, 30-something issues in. You know what I mean? He had some time into that. So, you know, they always adjust a little bit. So like even he took his own liberties with his, with his, you know, his property and right. adjusted it, but you got to, it's, it's different. But when you have something that's seven issues, you know, the bulk of it is really, you know, it's, it's a lot of, uh, you know, one word or, or no word panels. It was pretty easy, I think, to adapt it into what, like an hour, 45 minute movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, whenever I was watching it, I kept I kept looking at the sister and I was like, man, this, this she looks very familiar. And uh, it's the girl from the green room. The uh, the one that's like with him at the very end of the movie or whatever, the one that like sees uh, like it all go down. I can't remember what her name is. I, I, was, hmm. I kept watching it and I was like, oh, where the fuck does I, do I know this girl from? <laughs> But she, apparently she's in a lot of movies. Like she was in uh, Twenty Eight Weeks Later and Fright, like the the remake of Fright Night. And, uh, she was in V for Vendetta, like all these other movies. But I remember from the green room, I was like, this, I was like, who who is this person? She looks so familiar. It was driving me crazy. And then I figured it out, and I was like, okay, now, now I understand who who she is. That was another thing that I think when I first started reading the book, and again, it might be the fact that I had something on in the background. Um, it was this ridiculous show. It was like these guys that just go get like stung and bitten by venomous animals. So they can like, have it in like the pain index book that they're building. So there is definitely a lot of times where I got distracted, which is bad. So there's a strong possibility I'll revisit this seven issues, especially after I watch the movie. Um, but in that time, uh, when you see the older sister and she's taking care of the entire family, cooking dinner and talking about her job and, you know, all that kind of thing. I thought that was her mom at first. And that's why the ending kind of fucks, fucks with me a bit because I watching it or reading it, um, you know, I thought that was her mom at first and taking care of the family because I didn't see any mention of it being a sister. And then, you know, lo and behold, I paid attention a little more. Well, I thought her parents... I thought her parents had died and like her sister was in charge of taking care of them and that was what was, what was going on and then because you don't really even in the movie like they don't really hit i mean you just kind of see her get scared about like going upstairs and then like you see the the one friend kind of like try to take care of her and then she kind of like drops the water or whatever i think whenever she like kind of looks into the door and uh so you don't really get like the sense that her mom is even part of the the story until you know she goes in there and like lays down with her or, or i think I can't remember what it was whenever they first kind of like mentioned the mom yeah but you know, i mean really I, yeah i don't i don't think like um i think i think that was exactly the point was like to kind of suggest that something had happened and like uh, yeah, you definitely get the feeling like the mother's gone. Like these are two two girls just fending for themselves, and obviously, you know, uh, Babs. I don't even think we said her name, Barbara. Right? Is um, is not adjusting to it as well as you know the older sibling who has to take on a lot of the responsibility. You know, it's it's um, it's uh, and then you know I I. You know, when I was thinking about the whole, like every time she tries to go upstairs or thinks about upstairs or has a conversation about her mother, it seemed like it was very like her, her like her, the use, the words she used were like, were like, it, it was very like it had already happened. Like it was like everything was, was in the past and she was trying to move forward. Um, and then at the end, yeah, like you realize she starts fighting these monsters and she's like, you're not taking my my mother. And the monsters are like, we're not here for your mother. We're here for you. I don't know. It was uh, it was interesting. 
I low key thought she was going to die. Same. When I heard that those words, I was like, oh, like this kid is going to be done. Maybe this kid has a problem and, you know, um, she's fighting for her own life and thinking that it's for something else. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, I definitely thought like, so I, I think like what the, the, um, you know, the, the, the vessel that is the monster at the end is a storm, right? So this big storm comes rolling in. She's on her way home from school after just pretty much everything in life sucking. Right. And, uh, and there's this massive storm and, uh, or, or this massive wave, right? Something, something along the lines, it seemed like a storm to me. And, uh, and that's, that was like her fighting through the storm to get home. I definitely thought she was going to drown and, and, or, or not come back up. And then, you know, uh, she goes back and forth with the, with the Titan and, and then ultimately makes it back home right before her mom passes away, which is just, uh, you know, that, those last couple pages were pretty, pretty tough. <laughs> yeah. My girlfriend ugly cried. <laughs> or it was like for me like I, I like i lost my mom so it was something i could relate to and i had to take care of my uncle uh he got really sick with cirrhosis of the liver and i had uh, I, had, I had lived with him and took care of him and it was kind of like i could relate to you know seeing him in a room and not wanting to go in there just because of how fucking horrible he was and just like almost avoiding like going home sometimes because of it and just like being uh you know it, it, it was it was weird I, I completely agree. I my uncle had a, a brain tumor, and they knew he wasn't going to make it, and so they brought like a hospital bed into the house because my mom chose to you know let him pass at home, um, so she could be with him as long as she could, kind of thing. Um, and it got to a point. I was pretty young at the time. I think I was in seventh grade, sixth grade, something like that. Um, and uh, it got to the point where he couldn't talk anymore, and so I felt super awkward and weird as a kid going into a room and sitting there and just having like my uncle who I didn't super get along with. He was always really, like really hard on me kind of thing. Um, just kind of stare at me cause he couldn't say anything, you know? And uh, it's, it was a, a very weird thing as a child to sit and like watch this guy that you don't think likes you very much just like sit and eat a popsicle and stare at you for 45 minutes and you don't know what to do. You know, you don't know how to initiate conversation. You don't know what to tell this person, you know? So yeah, getting relating to that aspect towards the end of the movie uh, made my drive home a little difficult. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah. I, I, I have nothing that could compare to that. Um, so I, I, uh, I, it's interesting too that like through both of your experiences and uh, you know, how, how you connect with this book um, it, it's obviously much more uh, personal for you both. And I, I think like too, um seeing it on, like seeing it in live action, it just breaks your heart so much more. Like I, the, the movie is just like, is definitely, um, you know, it's real people. Uh, it's funny because like I, I found that part for me, like, yeah, obviously it was the big twist. It was the big like climax of the entire book. It, and that definitely made the book. Right. But I, I think that moment is what made the rest of the book. Like when I went back and looked at it that much better, like I enjoyed reading through the book so much more, like the parts that I didn't like the first time around. I liked that much more because I knew what was happening. I knew what was coming and like, it just all made, it was a lot clearer how she, how, what she was doing, you know? Right. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. So at certain points, you think the kid is just kind of a little asshole at certain things, you know, at, at certain parts, I love that she's a little asshole and it's, it seems great. But then, you know, the way she treats her little friend, sometimes I'm like, hey, you got some fucking issues there and you got to work that out. <laughs> I'm like, you, this is why you don't have friends, you know? And then I, you really to it. I treat all my friends like that. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we know. <laughs> you realize what she's going through and why it's happening to her, you know, or why she's acting that way. It makes everything totally different when you view it that way. Yeah. 
I'm like, damn, yes. am I this little girl? <laughs> I don't know, Alan. You tell us. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, all in all, I think that it's, uh, it, yeah, it 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 was very. There was a lot of emotion in it. I, I, you can definitely tell just through. You know, I, I don't think this was just some random made up story that Joe Kelly put together out of nowhere. You, you could tell there's there's definitely some some personal loss that's tied with this. Um, you know, there, there's, there's also, um, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, a moment of not reconciliation, but, you know, just coming to terms, uh, you know, and, and it makes a big difference. I, and I, so, I mean, I just going to show this last piece, right. But like, and I think Tom, you were the one who posted this one. And so, you know, this is, uh, right after the mother passes away, you know, th this this purse that she's carrying the whole time, she's got it with her. She's got the hammer on it. It's where she keeps the hammer, you know, the hammer. And, um, you know, at the funeral, she puts it uh, on her mother's grave. And then finally, after all that, she's like, you know, there's a little bit before this picture of her in the bed, but she, like, takes her time crying, climbs into bed. She, like, pulls the cover up and, and just says, like, she realizes that she's stronger, you know, we're we're, sh we're stronger than we think. And that was just like in her mother's bed too, not even yeah, her. right. That's what I meant. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the bed she was terrified of. And then again, yeah. you see like you know the pixies, angels, whatever they may be, with the hammer flying around her. You know the whole the whole series. They were much more demonic, much more like evil. And then finally, at the end, they're kind of like a little bit more lighthearted and uh, angelic, I guess. I think the most the most beautiful part um, leading up to this, right before this, is when she finally goes in and sits with her mom and lays with her mom, and you know, they connect again. Um, she passes away shortly afterwards, and when the the um, psychologist comes to Barbara um, in school to let her know, like it's happening, like her mom is going is dying right then and there, um, she's super prepared for it. She's not, she doesn't even act sad. She's ready. She understands what's happening. She's not afraid of what's happening anymore. You know, she has come to terms with it. And that's such a beautiful thing for such a small child because I, you know, there's times that people our age or even older are not going to be able to handle something that well. And yeah. she came a long way. Absolutely. I agree. Any other uh, any other final thoughts on it before we go into uh, ratings? I would just say, um, you know, it's a seven issue book, um, so just go read it. Even you know, we a lot of us might not have ever read that if it wasn't for this situation. You know, well, and it wasn't for Mike. Yeah, <laughs> and it wasn't for Mike. We've never read that in two thousand eight. You know, it'd be really hard for me to run across a random series like that and take a look at it. Um, and the first couple of issues for me were kind of hard. They, I, I didn't quite grasp on what was going on, and it wasn't very exciting to me and that kind of thing. But as a seven-issue book, there's no reason not to go through that, and it definitely paid off towards the end of it. So yeah. as a seven-issue series, like there's no reason not to check it out. You know? I, I, I agree. I agree. And you know, now that you just said this out loud, like I think about it, like if I bought this in single issues, I probably would have never finished it. I probably would have read the read the first issue and put it down i was exactly asleep reading it on my couch today I, I was like i was like issue like almost like almost issue three like end of issue two and i was like fuck I, this this shit is making me tired that's why you took a nap no i just take naps all the time anyway like, <laughs> this, is, this is my second nap today I took, a nap. I took a nap at like 11 from like 11 to 2 and then I like woke up and played Xbox for a little bit. And then, I watched, <laughs> and then I watched HBO, and then I was like, "Fuck, I gotta do a podcast at eight. I'm gonna take a nap at six. Like a life of a tattoo artist. Yeah, I was just gonna yeah. say, tough life, huh? Well, it's like it's my day off, so it's just like, cool. I get to take a nap. I, I nap a lot. I bust up, but but like, it fucks up my sleep schedule, so I'll probably stay up to like five o'clock in the morning tonight. Oof. Which I just, just, which is pretty much every day because I like taking naps. <laughs> All right, Mike. What's your rating? We do what we what we say one through five. Exactly. Yeah, one through five. One through five, but we're allowed to do halves and quarters, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. <laughs> um, 
I, I think as a whole, like objectively, I, 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 I would like to say a four, but I think that, um, objectively i have to say you know all said and done this is probably a three and a half i i'm gonna go with a, a solid three and a half it um i do as much as i love it i think you could have uh there could have been um i i agree with what alan said i think the movie was much better and this is like my second or third time reading back on, over it it's uh yeah right there Alan, what do you think? I'm letting, letting you go next. I, I feel like you're kind of gracious with that rating because we gave the last week's book, what, a three, three, three and a half? And I was more interested in that from start to beginning than I was from this one. Like, I, I wasn't really involved until the very end of the book. So I mean, I, if I'm being honest, Alan, I probably want to say four, but I'm saying three and a half because I feel like I'm just like – there's a lot of like, oh, I remember reading this book so long ago in me. That is why I'm so like kind of excited about the book. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I'm actually holding back. I, I like this better than last week's book. But I I, um, I also like the art. I, like, I don't know. I love anime and I love manga. So I think there's part of that as well. Well, I love those things too, but I want – and I, I don't know if it's just the kind of person that I am. I just, I like action, man. I want yeah. action. I want blood. I want her to be in fucking armor. And <laughs> I want like her running up a Titan and knocking its head off or something like So, I'm so then to, you can go watch Attack on Titan after this and you're going to get oh, all yeah, of yeah. that stuff. <laughs> I, I couldn't even get into that, man, honestly. But um, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with a two. Two out of five. I, I just... Even though it was, like the story was kind of relatable, I just I need more blood. <laughs> I, I, I wanted her like decked out in armor and you know just. And I, I think it's like you said, man. It's perspective, right? Like yeah, yeah. You you, you went into this thinking like, oh, this is called I Kill Giants, and then you saw like the big movie title, and you're like, oh, this is gonna be fucking gory and brutal, and then that's not. And then it was a you know a YA graphic novel. So I think that makes sense. It's perspective. <laughs> I'm probably going to like cut you guys right in the middle. Um, I would probably give it <clears throat> again, as relatable as Alan and I can talk about these things. Um, I would probably put it roughly at a, a 2.5. Um, <laughs> literally just, um, and it's, no, like I said, it's seven issues. There's no reason not to check it out and, you know, decide for yourself. Um, we are just three random jack-offs. So, mm -hmm. um, but at, at a 2.5, I would say the reasoning behind that is literally just the uh, the lack of a grab for me um, in the first few issues. Uh, and again, I don't like anime or manga at all. So the art was a struggle for me to enjoy it. Yeah. There were some cool aspects behind it. I'll give you that, no matter what. Um, but yeah, it was it was not quite there for what I enjoy. Um, again, watching that movie was a totally different story, and it's Joe Kelly's story, hundred percent, because he wrote the movie, um, and it it came through at a totally different level for me watching that movie. Um, so I literally think the art took me out of the story um, more than anything. Yeah, I think that's probably what I would have guessed that both of you would have said. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, Tom right. doesn't like anything, so it's just, Tom, now, Tom. now I'm starting to understand why me and Tom get along so well, because as <laughs> much as he hates everything, I hate everything. So You guys are both cynical assholes. <laughs> no, <I'm> just joking. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's funny that for, for me to say, like, I fucking hate anime, because I, I honestly do, but, like, have you guys yeah. ever watched Blue Chan before? The little, yes. like, yes. 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 I have yeah. Blue Chan tattooed on my leg. I like that so much. But I can't stand anything else. Is that is that like a from like watching Adult Swim back in the day when it was on at two a.m. type thing? A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ended up buying all of the DVDs. <laughs> That's great. I have, I have all six volumes of the manga, and I've never opened them. But I, watched, like, <laughs> I love Shin Chan so much. I'm not going to read backwards. That shit's not happening. But I love Shin Chan so much that I had to have them. Yeah. 
that's the most obscure, like perverted, just re- out of the <laughs> out of this world manga ever. Like exactly, that's you know, it's still like a fucking five year old child that can't keep his pants up, and he's always talking about his elephant, which is his penis, and he's doing his ass dance, and like they have a great. Ah, speaking of like you know today's what well, preventing the fifth. Um, they have a great Star Wars uh, yeah. in like three episodes or something um, that are fucking hilarious. They're way better than like the Family Guy ones. And uh, but yeah, super super filthy and fantastic. <laughs> I think you might like a lot more uh, anime than you think you do because there's a whole there's a whole genre out there like that. <laughs> I just can't get past an- the animation. The animation just fucking pisses me off. Yeah, I get that. That's funny. I get that. Um, all right. Well, um, so that was I Kill Giants. Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, like Tom like Tom said, just give it a try. It's seven issues. It's definitely uh, it was definitely fun. Um, next week we're talking about uh, volume one of Deadly Class, which uh, Alan, I have all. Uh, I, I 100% um, believe that you will get everything you you want out of this book. So, if you I, 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 have you watched the show yet? Who are you talking to? At any of you? Either of you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually I've watched it like three or four times. I, awesome. Because because what what it's been like what two years? Yeah, it's been a while. I rewatched it the other day, and then I tried showing my girlfriend. Um, it but she i can't remember what she was doing she had to go to work or something that i rewatched it again i've I've watched it like three or four times already all the way through is she sitting there because he was just like pointed yeah she's actually she just woke up from her nap so (laughs) (laughs) is it her day off too or is she sleeping on the job she it's her it's her day off she uh last time whenever we did this she was getting dressed and like i had the screen still up and like i guess like whenever you exit out of here it has like a little like uh animations of like two people talking and she was just like standing there like naked and she's like w- is is that screen still up and i was like no 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 it's fine and so now she's you know topless getting out of bed and <laughs> this is where all the viewers come in like let's do this <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just see you just see a naked, a naked woman walk right walk by the back of the screen So on that note, perfect transition. A um, couple, couple of other things we got. Uh, so um, Invincible season finale. I, I think we talked about it. We no, we didn't talk about it because it was this. Uh, it was this past Friday. Yeah. With, uh, so, so it yet. You away. haven't seen it yet. Okay. All no, right. I'm saying someone watching hasn't seen it yet, and you don't oh. want it to be up for you. Like yes. no way. Spoilers ahead. Stop, stop listening right now. You're stop listening. Idiot. So uh, we'll watch it and then come back. There you go. Fuck, man that that series that, that that's like the best comic thing to come out in uh, a couple years. I think it's fucking awesome. <laughs> what did you guys? What did you guys think about the last episode? I like the fight. The fight between him and Omni Man. Uh, yes. There's like the part where he's holding. He's holding him by the head in the fucking train of people. Yes. It's just that yes. that was yes. that was awesome. Well, oh, I was talking, I was every talking time about, he, every time he moves his arm, somebody <sighs> else's face just explodes. Yeah, right. yeah. I was talking to Max about it because I had recently uh, purchased a bunch of like earlier issues of it, and we were talking about how far into the series the actual show is. And I was telling him, I was like, I don't know, man, maybe like twenty issues, but they pull stuff from. Yeah. Like it's it's not so much. I was like, there's characters in the earlier issues that haven't appeared yet that I think yep. are eventually going to appear. So it's kind of hard to tell because they pull so much shit from different issues, and uh, it's not really, I guess, not not really in order. It's just kind of, you know, sporadic. Yeah, it is very. Um, it's. In, uh, I'm sure they they have their reasons, or you know, Kirkman wrote. He's writing the the the, the animated series as well. Um, but I, it's very interesting the things they chose to speed up and the things they chose to omit. You know, like they're definitely heavily, like they sped up the whole Guardians of the Globe, like got them back into their spots. Eve is 
I mean, in the series she's in Africa, it seems like she's somewhere in like the Midwest in this or like, I don't know, maybe like Nevada or something like that. But um, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I think the, I, I think like the, the choice of using, you know, speeding up the whole thing with Omni Man and that, that makes sense to me. Um, but everything else is, yeah. It, I mean, it, it's good either way. Well, I think the Guardians of the Globe, like even in the comic books, you literally just get the introduction of them and then them getting summoned to the thing and dying and so yeah. you don't get any like I mean, I think with a couple of them, like you get like a like a like maybe like one or two panels of something, but you know, I, I think in the very beginning of the Invincible season, like season one, or like not season one, but episode one, you see them fighting in like the front of the White House or something like that. Like you don't even get that in the in the in the comics, like they're legit. Like, here's this character. Here's them saying goodbye to somebody or something, and then yeah, bam, they're fighting Omni Man and getting fucking totally wrecked. Yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely. I mean, you you get them. They're they're fighting the the clones for like an issue or something like that. But I I meant more like the new Guardians, like the younger, oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like, like, uh, they just ha- like there's a whole there's like a whole arc of like probably more than that where it's like they're going through the just like figuring out who's going to be on the team they go through the whole thing of like all of them fighting each other and like the whole thing with like monster girl and uh what's his name rex or whatever yeah. it's just all i hear is jason manzukas because he's who do who does that voice and that's all i hear <laughs> but yeah. um yeah i don't know it, it it's it's uh it makes sense for the like let's get them established here's the here's the the stakeholders here are the people that are going to be in this long term, and like here's the people, spoiler for the comic who like make it most of the way through the comic book, and now we can just introduce villain, 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 and it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. <clears throat> One thing I was uh, that made me like laugh, and I was trying to figure out why it would happen, um, is that Kirkman, being the person that's you know helping write this or writing it himself, um, why he would change. Mark's favorite comic book from Science Dog, he changed it to like something totally different. It was something yeah. about science still and an animal, but it was not Science Dog. Yeah. And I'm like, do you not own the rights to your own stuff anymore? Was it? So, uh, it was the. Oh, what was it? Was it the? Oh fuck, I can't remember now because I remember yeah, someone was, talking about it. Was it like the the? Didn't we talk about it? At one point, it was super similar, but it's not the same as the book. And so I was just curious. It was like the the underwater welder or something like that. But it's, I think yeah, it was a, it was it was like they show him they show that Jeff Lemire book, the underwater yeah, yeah. welder or whatever. I don't I don't recall. I don't you know. So I'm I'm gonna sit down and watch this whole thing again. I have to, and I want to yeah, watch like I all know. of it. I, I want to watch it like as much as I can in like two days or whatever. But um, I do not recall that. Like, I, I know what you're talking about, and I know Science Dog because that's like a pretty – I mean, it's a pretty big part later on with Science Dog f- comes into the comic. So Yeah, there was weird crossovers that didn't need to exist, and you know. But, like, it was – you know, I remember one, like, little section that stood out to me a lot when I was collecting a lot of comics um, – was Robert Kirk, or I'm um, sorry, uh, Invincible was at a comic book store and he was picking up Science Dog because it's his favorite book. Yeah. And he was mentioning that there was like 30 different variant covers. And he was like, why are they just milking us for all this money and blah, blah, blah. And this was the same time that I think Invincible or um, uh, Walking Dead 100 was coming out. And there was like 17 variants for it. And I was like, Kirkman's just roasting himself, and it's fantastic. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. It's that, definitely. Uh, I'm. I don't know what it is about like shit like this. Like I, I've been like fiending to fucking own single issues of this book now. Like, <laughs> it, it, it's driving me crazy. Like I, I'm literally like up because I stay up all night. I'm like searching eBay. My girlfriend's just like give me this like wild look. <laughs> <laughs> 
I like I don't know like if I get excited about something like I want the single issues like I've been reading it on Comicology, but yeah. like I I'm so like why did I sleep on this for so long? Why did it take this show to come out and the books to be fucking stupid expensive now, for me to be like oh, I I want to own this. I read I read this I, the first time I bought trades of this I think I they were they were pretty deep when I started reading this um, I don't know like there was already like. Six, seven seven or eight trades that were out i bought all of them like i bought like two of them and then i just bought every single one after i read the first two and then i read them in trades but i even would fall off like i remember one time like after i mean because i don't there's got to be like i've got them all um, there's there's definitely like a hundred there's like 20 it's 150 issues so what's that like yeah. 25 25 trades probably somewhere give or take 20 trades like, I remember like not reading a bunch for like I would go back and I'd be like, oh, there's five trades that came out of Invincible, <laughs> <laughs> and read it all. But um, it's all I think like the first fifteen are free on like if you have the Comicsology app or if you pay for that service. I was just looking at that the other day. It almost made me. There's a bunch of free stuff on there, but. Well, it's good. Comicology will do like a, a free seven day trial, and then after that seven day trial, you get thirty days free. Oh. I mean, I think I think it's like six dollars a month anyway. Like six dollars a month, three comics unlimited. Like, I, I think it's pretty much worth it, especially with the way that I'm not wanting to buy like newer shit. And yeah, I get to read shit that I you know wouldn't usually read because it's just there for me to read. Yeah, yeah. I I definitely find it easy when they have those sales and there's like a 750 page compendium of some book that's for a dollar 99 and it's like oh yeah i'm gonna yeah. buy that and just <laughs> i bought in so many of those that i'm just like i'm gonna buy this because one day i'm gonna want to read it <laughs> and but i mean the, the things the things that i really love i collect and i i should i haven't but now it's even you know you were talking about single issues getting the hardcover like uh omnis of, of this book is like it's stupid expensive now it's like 250 bucks for the first for the first one it's it's out of this world yeah, well, I, 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 i'm sorry go tom no, i was gonna say that's how i started with invincible was buying the the larger hard covers they weren't omnibuses or anything like that but they were you know like two or three trades deep um in one hardcover and i think i bought volume one two and three, and then started collecting the issues after that. Um, but since I have, you know, I've, I've had them at like 90% of everything signed by Ryan Otley, and then I sold everything a long time ago. It happens. Yeah, and I'm sure this book wasn't underprinted for number one. I'm sure there's plenty of them out there. So, Well, I, I was going to say, like, I, I have a – I remember seeing this, like, four years ago. Like, it, it, I mean, I feel like it's always been like number one, it's always been kind of not like a crazy expensive book, but like it was kind of up there. Like, I was like, ah, Invincible, you know, like I, I've yeah. never seen, I think it's maybe like $300, like a 9.8, something like that, like four years ago. And I was just like, ah, never read it. But now I'm wishing because, like, I think we're all, we're all now, like, just number one is going for like a thousand fucking dollars. That's stupid. Like, it's, it's crazy. Like, I, I'm watching these eBay auctions and it's like, a thousand dollars for this raw book just because of this awesome ass tv show and it's like i mean but you know a, a lot of the issues have you know i think like under ten thousand fucking print run mm -hmm. so I, I think even some of them have like under like seven thousand like it's just the print run for this book is not crazy yeah yeah i'm sure there's there's plenty of like i mean as books go on the the print you know the the print run goes, you know, they go down. It's been these kind of books, right? Like not yeah, something yeah. like fucking Batman or whatever, something like that. But like, there's always the image ones, right? Like that first image, and then the sales for number two are like half of what it was, and then the sales for number two, three are half of number two, and it just continues to go until you get the base, right? And I, so I'm sure, like, the first appearance of some character that's going to be in the show. That super low print run issue thirty seven or one thirty seven, who knows, is going to be yeah yeah that's that's uh that's just the market we live in now, boys. Unfortunately, you can't fucking buy comic books anymore. 
Do you guys have a favorite character in the show? Uh, so, I don't. What do you? What do you? What do you think? Wh- who's yours, Tom? <laughs> I I'm very excited, knowing the book and have read it before. Um, I'm excited to see more of Alan the alien, yeah. especially because he's Seth Rogen, and I feel like that. Like reading the book, I could totally picture Seth Rogen doing that voice now. Now that like his, char- his characteristics and things like that, I'm like that makes so much fucking sense. It was the perfect casting, and so I'm very excited to see him further on in the book. Well, him and him and the guy that uh, that did Preacher, they're both like producers on the show, right? I think so. Yeah, I, th- I think I think it's a him and the same guy that did Preacher. So it makes sense that you know, I mean, it's it's the, the perfect voice for the character as well. Yeah. I did not know that was Seth Rogen. I I, uh, I had no idea. How do you uh, not? He is the most recognizable voice. I feel. Yeah, he is. No, I I just I sometimes I just don't pay attention to that shit. Like I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. I, I didn't catch it. Well, you I mean, also don't. You don't get a lot of a lot of him either. Like you get like them first yeah, thing he, and then he's only in it like for a, like a few yeah. seconds. Yeah, two yeah. episodes and they're both short periods yeah. of time. Which is funny too, right? Because like even the introduction of him, like in the comic book, he's in it super early, you know, like, and then he goes away for a long time, like, and then he comes back and then he really comes back later in the series or whatever. But uh, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting that choice, but like, so like, does that make you think, and I, I'm, I'm totally down with this, right? Cause there was a lot loaded into the end of that episode, right? You had the, the, um, the, the say, the say quids, right? What are they called? The, uh, the Martian, qu- like whatever they are, those little, little, uh, little squids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you saw those like already, you know, they are, were already on the astronaut. So, you know, that's already happening, which is, I mean, that like, the like, I, it's hard for me to, uh, I, I don't know who I like the best in this animated series because I think some of my favorite characters are not in it yet. So I, if I had to choose from like the eight episodes or whatever that we watched, I guess it's just in this Mark, like I'm just stoked to see it was fucking Mark. Like it yeah. was Mark Grayson. Like when that was the voice I heard his mannerisms were exactly, it was just everything you expected him to be a whiny little bitch. at sometimes like, cause he's such a whiny little bitch and you're just like, you have all the power in the world. Why are you, why are you like this? <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So whenever I first like watched the first episode, I, I didn't I mean I went into watching the show without reading any of the comic books, and uh, I think like the first scene, like whenever you like whenever they first show all the the guardians, uh, I was like, this is kind of cheesy. They just kind of like knock off characters like the Flash and Wonder Woman and Aquaman and Omni Man is pretty much Superman. Yeah. So it's just like, and then you see like how fucking crazy it gets, and I was like, yeah, this is great. Um, Favorite character, I would have to say, I like Battle Beast, man. Yeah, he's badass. He just he just fucking rocks everybody. I also like it's a weird character that's not really. I, I like um, which is Bulletproof, the guy who can like cover himself with like the uh, the concrete. Right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like the gangster in the series. Oh, yeah, he was in this, wasn't he? It's I um yeah, it's crazy. I have to like I can't. I can't separate the two in my head. I cannot say, I can't think back and say like, was that in the series or was that in the book? Because I just started re I re started rereading it like midway through. I didn't read any of the beginning of the book again. I read like, I, I went into like right after Mark goes off to the planet and he finally sees like his dad. And I wanted to read all the way through again. Cause I feel like that's the stuff I don't remember the most of. <clears throat> like I really remember the beginning and I really remember the end, but I don't remember any of that middle stuff. Huh. Yeah. It was, it was cool to see battle beast brought in so early God, because so- I definitely feel like he, in the book, he wasn't there that quickly. And I, you know, seeing towards the end of the last episode where they show all the different villains and kind of set up a bunch of other nonsense. Um, seeing more Battle Beasts, I was like, fuck yeah, it's going to happen. Fucking wreck dudes. Great. Battle Beast is a bad motherfucker. 
Yeah, that 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 fight where they are fighting in the like a uh, machine head's little fucking penthouse thing was just fucking brutal. Yeah. yeah. And and the best part of like this show is just like every time there's like a fight scene like that or this series whatever like you're like, "Oh, this is it can't like how could it ever get more gruesome than this?" And it just continually does. <laughs> Like even just in the show, like they showed the whole, like that fight in the penthouse, like in his office, and then you just watch the the fight between him and Omni Man, and it's just like, yeah, they're gonna go for this. It just keeps getting brutal, more brutal, more brutal. Oh, well. <clears throat> great that they were able to pick up for season two and three. If people watching yeah. haven't heard that yet, so that's awesome. But they they have a lot of room to explore at this point. Yeah, I, uh, you think, um, I think that, I think he sets this up to go multiple seasons. Like, I think he's going to set this up to really run the gamut of the, of the series. Um, so obviously, I mean, like, what, what are your, I guess, what do you guys hope to see in the next two seasons? Like, slightly better animation. <laughs> It's like the first season of every show is it is what it is. You know what I mean? And yeah. it always gets slightly better once they get picked up. They maybe get a little more money or they may get a little more of this or a little more of that. Um, and there was just some times watching it where like lips were just like super, super off. Right. Oh, yeah. And I was just kind of like, it, ma- it made me think I was watching anime. And I, I, don't <laughs> want to. Yeah, I can't believe it. <laughs> Take me out. Um, so yeah, I hope that there's a little tweak there. It makes it a little uh, smoother. Yeah, I mean the style definitely f- looked exa- a lot like the book, but it was it was like stiff. It was like mm-hmm. you would see them; they were all they would all just be standing in one place and having a conversation, and only their lips were moving, and like one hand was going like that or something. Right. There wasn't. Yeah, it was very. Yeah, I could see that. And um, I wonder if that's, you know, that's a money thing starting off. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're like we have this much money to tell this story. I'm going to give you this many episodes. Go ahead and do it. You know, maybe you can't pull off something as smooth or, you know, nice yeah. looking with that much money. Who knows? Yeah. Or it could have been the choice. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, that's. Yeah, who knows? I, I mean. Like the, what's that? I still like it. Even if the animation stays the same, I'll still fucking watch it. Oh, yeah. No, I, I will, too. It's true. But I'm going to bitch if I want to bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, like, character-wise, like, I mean, so, like, obviously they set up um, the squids, the alien squids. They set up um, they set up Alan the alien. I mean, there's still the... What the fuck are those one-eyed robots that the what's that that the dude makes the the scientist the mad scientist? Oh, like those, the, I forget what they're called. They're but uh, he's work, he's working for Cecil now, so yeah, they're not necessarily going to be a threat, but no. I'm sure we will see them more 100. percent Yeah, but yeah, that, that last episode goes through six or seven different villains that we've either already seen or haven't seen yet. And just shows you that they're all still doing stuff. And I think that's just kind of a way for them to revisit stuff in the second season to to push things along. You know, a lot of those villains, like that seismic dude over in in the mountains, you know, it was was a comedian. Yeah, Yeah, the the fight meant nothing. Like he was he was whatever. And they were talking while it happened. And, you know. And so it's cool for them to be able to go back to those guys and be like, no, fuck you. Like, I'm going to do some damage at this point, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you get that in the series. Like, all these people always exist in the series, right? Like, they're always kind of around. Um, I mean, there's some very very definitive deaths. But, like, they're... Yeah, that would be awesome if, like, it was just... There wasn't, like a quote unquote big bad all the time. It was just like, there's all this shit going on. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely want to see, um, I had to look up his name because I couldn't fucking remember. Um, and it is, um, 
is Angstrom Levy. Like, I mean, that was kind of the first, like, real, like, quote unquote, bad guy villain in the series. If I, if I'm remembering correct, and he comes back a lot. Like, he's becomes that overarching, like, mega villain kind of dude. Um, and uh, I just thought the whole like. I remember thinking back to like the whole, like the multiples of him was just so cool in the comic book and shit. He's evil as fuck. Yeah, I, I uh, read something where uh, Kirkham actually is teasing that he's going to be like a large part of uh, the upcoming seasons. Yeah, I feel like he kind of has to be. I mean, obviously, we're going to get fucking Omni Man coming back. Yeah. I mean, and that's the other thing. Like, with three seasons, they could still just focus on Omni Man. Like, there's just, there's enough, like, there's enough that they don't have to introduce anyone new. They could just stick with everybody they've already introduced and have so much. Like, they could do, like, the next five seasons like that. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think they're going to reestablish a lot of these really quick villains we saw coming back yeah. like tenfold while Omni Man's gone. I I would love for Omni Man to be gone for like the whole next season, you know. And Mark is just being Mark and still trying to go to college and then dealing with all these other random bullshit dudes the entire time. It's yeah. it's still going to be very impactful. And the idea of Omni Man coming back with his entire race. To yeah. then conquer Earth because Alan let you know uh, let Mark know that, that was going to happen at some point, but I, I like the the over looming like thought that it's going to happen, but there's so much they can tell before any of that takes place. Yeah, and I mean eventually, like they have to lead to. Um, I almost said Infinity War, uh, Invincible, <laughs> in, in, <laughs> Invincible Wars. Like they they just yeah. have to. I mean that's like the penultimate crisis, whatever the fuck you want to call it that happens in this. So yeah, that's interesting. I mean, there's, yeah, I, I, I think that's what this comic book always was. Like it was like the, like the superhero shit was just kind of like, um, it was like, yeah, it was like, it was like in going on in the background, almost like, comedically, like it was just kind of like, Oh, look at all these people dying. And they're like, he's having a conversation about his project and that he's got to do for class. And it's just like, Oh, this is brutal. It's yeah. building on that, that original Spider-Man trope where it's like Spider-Man was a book about a high school kid and the troubles he went through in high school Yeah, just because he had superpowers and to defeat all these random dudes. That wasn't the focus yeah. on the book. You know, yeah. it was about the kid going through day to day life on yeah. top of having to save the world, you know? And, Kirkman literally wrote on the Invincible book the best superhero title out there. Like it, yeah. it's written on the issues, you can see that. And uh, I I think it's funny because it did go with that whole Spider-Man kind of aspect of it just being a kid, and you that kid has to live a life, and you're gonna you're gonna witness it while he takes care of all this other bullshit on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, obviously that character's created after Dick Grayson, like Nightwing. I think he said it like that. He, he's he got a lot of respect for that whole younger teenage superhero, Spider-Man, all that, like the troubles that, that you know, like he was a huge Teen Titans or, or whatever. Uh, like that was his favorite book. So you see that. I mean, that's what those old comics were though, right? It was like... It was mo like the whole book was just like Peter Parker having issues. And then there was like one scene of him punching somebody and one scene of him swinging. And that's it. Like there's like, and that's, that's this, except people's esophaguses are getting ripped out in that one scene. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it, it is interesting that cause you make that comparison because it definitely fits. It's just. Yeah. It's the boys version of Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's funny. Yeah. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. No, I, like I said, man, like, I, I think I, I don't know if I said this like on the uh, on the show or like in the chat or something, but like when this N Falcon was were coming out, I watched this every Friday first. Like I, I was way more excited about this than Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, it's definitely better. Yeah, yeah. Speaking you, of that, I was gonna. I'm not gonna derail completely. No, go ahead. Did you guys notice that uh, Loki is now going to come out on Wednesdays and not Fridays like everything else? Yes. Well, I, I mean, do you think that they're afraid? Do you think that's like a – I mean, the ratings don't matter, right? So it doesn't it, – gonna. Some, we're all going to watch it at some point or another. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just because we didn't watch it 10 minutes after it came on Disney Plus is yeah. kind of interesting that they would try and change the date, but – who knows? Oh, why are they what? changing? Is there like a reason behind it? No, they literally uh, released a trailer of Loki. It was just Tom Hiddleston talking about how it was like Wednesdays are the new Friday, and yeah, it they just then changed the date from June sixth or whatever it was to June third, and now they're airing on every Wednesday instead of Friday. Well, it could be because uh, Bad Batch is. That's what Friday. I was. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I. I was wondering, yeah, because that just started. Yeah, I'm sure. It's, I'm sure it's going to go because I, I know the first episode was 70 minutes, and then they're releasing another episode this, this Friday. Friday. Yeah, and then so every other Friday would be, or every Friday would be a new Bad Batch episode. So I know uh, again, not to derail, and I know Tom, you don't give a fuck, but uh, did you watch Bad Batch, uh, Alan? So I stayed up um, on Thursday, or not on Thursday. I stayed Tuesday. up. Was it yes, yesterday? Yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. I stayed up until two o'clock in the morning, and uh, I started to watch it. But I I was extremely tired, so I haven't I haven't watched the rest of what I watched. But the very beginning that I watched was really. I mean, it's it's Clone Wars. It's yeah. It, it's you know it, it's good. Yeah, I haven't sure. watched it yet. I was I was working from home uh, yesterday, and I watched the entire thing. And uh, I've never seen an episode of Clone Wars in my life. Again, really? As both of you know, I don't give a fuck about Star Wars. <laughs> but um, I watched it, and uh, knowing that it was like a continuation of Clone Wars and things like that, so I had an idea, you know. And it's like The Mandalorian has Clone Wars things related to yeah. it as well. So right. like, I get that. And watching all of Mandalorian, I looked into certain things. I'm like, where that, you know, where that dark saber come from, and, you know, this and that. And so I right. get where everything's happening. Um, so it was a cool show, not necessarily knowing about those characters beforehand, um, and just being an outsider in general when it comes to the uh, the source material. Um, I did enjoy it. There was some the animation's a little interesting for me. Um, it's kind of cool seeing the texture on some of the faces because yeah. you can literally just see lines, like massive amounts of lines on like one of the general's faces. Um, you can see the way that they shaded his face and everything, and it's not typical when it comes to animation. Um, so, uh, in general, I like I liked the show. It was fine. <laughs> yeah, my my uh, my nine year old daughter. I asked her if she had watched it. And, uh, her, I guess, like her her second day. I don't know what to call it. her stepdad. Stepdad. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not her technically second, the other one. Yeah. The other dad, one. Dad. Point point five. I don't know, whatever. Point, now. <laughs> Point uh, the the, 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 down, dad. the downgraded dad, the DC right. dad. Of course, I, I'm I'm Marvel dad. He's DC dad. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Let's take a step back there, guy. Not as great, but people still read it for whatever reason. And sure. uh, um, they were they were saying that they tried to get her like try to get her to watch Clone Wars before, and she didn't like it. And then uh, they try to get her to watch the Bad Batch, and she's like, I didn't like it. And then she like walks off. They were FaceTiming, and she like walks away, and she's like, "I kind of liked it." So, I mean, and she she doesn't like any of that stuff. I mean, she the only thing she really likes is like Avatar, like the Last Airbender, and all that, like the the like that animated series. But you know, she's yeah. not very big on. I mean, she's nine years old. She's she's nine year old girl. She doesn't care about fucking Star Wars, but she liked she liked the Bad Batch. Yeah, there's you know there ends up being uh, without giving things away since not everyone's watched the entire thing there ends up being a small child a female child character that is like a big character 
And, um, you know, your daughter may get a little more attached at that point when she gets gets there, you know, and she may want to watch it more. Yeah, Barbie. I don't, personally, <laughs> I, I don't care if you spoil it. I'm not really, like, I'll, I'll watch it. I'm not, like, invested in it. And, like, I watched all of Clone, Clone Wars and all of Rebels, like, when it was coming out. But I, uh, I'm also, like, not, like, heavily invested in it. <laughs> I, it's interesting. Like, so you, I mean, and again, like, right, you can watch this and like, they have to, it doesn't matter if you did or didn't watch those old shows. They have to create this as one mm -hmm. thing because it could be like Alan's daughter first time coming on board with anything Star Wars. It, it has to be a jumping on a jumping on point. It's a new show standalone. Yeah. Right. So um, you didn't, I guess. And again, like you can Google like, Quick, like the dark saber. What is the dark saber? And before you even finish typing it, Google's going to tell you all about it, right? But um, did you find yourself like through the first seventy minutes or whatever, like being like, "Wait, what the fuck is going on?" Or was it just like, "Oh, this is not really," because, um, like I said, going into it not knowing anything whatsoever, um, it, they gave backstories, at least small backstories for yeah. the Bad Batch and what they were and how they were fucked up clones compared to all the other clones and in you know all the other stormtroopers do look alike they're the only ones that don't look like the exact same person and which is funny to see because then you watch the movies and like anytime you see a stormtrooper i know they're not all john boyega you know what i mean i'm like they don't we know they're not all exactly the same so watching the show and seeing them all be exactly the same yeah. except for this batch of five dudes that are totally different and they were tested on and that's why they're different and because of the tests they all have slightly better advantages in certain things and so that's where they became their little group and they do things differently yeah. um so that and that was neat it was cool to see that not knowing again not knowing anything about it i was like i can these guys are cool all right they're not just <laughs> basic fucking stormtroopers no no they're badasses i mean like horrible fucking quasi uh, uh, Australian accents aside and all that bullshit, like th they're the best part of fucking of those shows. Like they really are. Like Ahsoka's badass, um, Obi Wan sure. is badass. But like, how much were they in the other shows prior to this? I mean, they're always in the show. They're in the show every. Like, there's a lot of there's stretch. There's like almost. There's seven seasons of Clone Wars. There's, yeah, there's so many seasons, but there's like one season in the middle that is almost entirely, um, whatever the, the the squadron is, um, at the time. But it's just like, yeah, yeah, I forget. I haven't watched it for forever. But it's like just about them and like you know their brotherhood and like one of them betrays them and they need to like. Then there's one about a, a new squadron who has to like. Um, work task, together and all this. Task Force shit. 99. Yeah, Task Force 99. Which is interesting you say that one of them betrays them because then like something kind of similar happens in this. And yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Split up, you know? I mean, um, it's it's Star Wars. Somebody's always getting fucking betrayed. Like that is right. just a standard. <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> Bad batch. All right, now I'm like I'm gonna maybe not go play four straight hours of Warzone after this, and maybe watch Bad Batch in instead. I'm definitely gonna eat some Taco Bell. Uh, right. hey, hey, it's Cinco de Mayo. Why not? <laughs> I was like craving Taco Bell earlier, but my my girlfriend like works overnight, so she uh, I bought donuts in the morning, so she like woke up from her initial nap and ate donuts. <laughs> And so I was like, fuck, I really want some Taco Bell. I'm not going to go get Taco Bell while she's eating donuts because then, you know, whatever. All right. Interesting logic there. <laughs> Perfect would, logic. Yeah, some Taco Bell while my girlfriend ate donuts. <laughs> well, you know, what if she got, what if she got hungry early, like later? And then I was like, oh, I'm not hungry because I just ate fucking uh, a, right. giant, a giant bag of Taco Bell. She should have ate more donuts. That is true. But donuts so, are kind of like, eh. They're a little fluffy. I get it. Yeah. They're too sweet. It's true. You can only eat so many donuts. I ate two. 
Maybe. <laughs> we have anything else to talk about? Or are we done? Um, I mean, the only other thing I put down, and we we don't have to talk about it too much, is um, I mean, there's there's an another thing that I care about. Like, I don't know how much you guys care about the Green Lanterns, but we got a, a first glimpse into that show finally from HBO Max. They casted Guy Gardner with uh, some dude who's from, uh, I don't know, um, what's that show, American Horror Story? Mm-hmm. And uh, He doesn't look know. douchey enough to be Guy Gardner. It just, it just doesn't. I just like Guy Gardner. They always say like he has the, the face that you, you – like he has that face that you want to punch or whatever it is. That guy definitely has that face. Yeah, he has that face, but you know what? It doesn't look like it's been punched enough. Like, yeah. Guy Gardner is like burly and like grizzled, and like, like he's not old, but he's like kind of like that old war dude who's like seen shit, and he's just like his face is kind of fucked up, and he's got that little kind of like almost short little pug nose, and like he's just like angry and gnarled. I, I don't know. He's not a like. Th- this dude looks like Kyle Rayner to me. I, I love fucking Green Lantern. I, I, read, I agree with that completely. And, and I love Kyle Rayner. Like, I think I still, like, people hate on him for all the reasons they do. But, like, I fucking love him as a Green Lantern. I loved all the... the I like Mike, him more than Guy Gardner. Yeah, yeah. Guy Gardner, I don't give a fuck about. Yeah, I, I don't care. The, I cared most about him more recently when he was a Red Lantern than I ever did about him as a Green Lantern. <laughs> Because Red Lantern, um, Red Lantern is better than I mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They 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 spit blood. You know, their yeah. their energy is blood energy. So of well, course you like that. They have an angry ass cat. An angry <laughs> ass cat. If a cat, yeah. if a cat <laughs> was a lantern of any sort, it would be a fucking Red Lantern. And they whoever brought that in, whoever wrote that, whoever created, definitely has a cat. This and this fucking cat, like that was the smartest thing you ever could have done. <laughs> I agree with that. Did you guys um, Did you guys see they cast Red Sonia for a movie? I did see that. Yeah, yeah. I did see that. I, I can't I, remember the actress's name, and I feel bad, but it's uh, she played um, what was it Ghost in uh, Yeah, Ant Man. Yeah. And she, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That'll be interesting. I, I'm excited to see all of the um, very yeah. white privileged men be angry that she's not a white ginger playing. Yes. Yeah. Red I saw a interesting tweet. I don't know if you saw what I posted. Like I saw that on Twitter and I like screen screenshotted like what um, one of the accounts I follow reposted. And it was essentially, he said, uh, let all the, but she's not begin. And, uh, and there, and it's not, or, or, but, but she's right. So it was like, but she's black, but she's not red, uh, not a redhead, but yeah. she's blah, 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 whatever it is. Right. And uh, and after like there is some satire in the comments, but somebody was like, "Oh, all the um, marginalized redheads are really going to hate this one." <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. So her name is Hanna John Carmen. Is my best shot at it. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, she doesn't look like Red Sonia from the comic book, but. You know what? I, who gives a fuck? And also, I don't give a fuck about that comic book anyway. Yeah. A- and uh, even if I did, like, oh. who cares? Yeah. She's a badass yeah. actress. She's got awesome credits here. Like, this show that people talk about, I don't know anything about it, Killjoy. I, I don't know what it is. I've never watched it. But people fucking love that show and love her in it. So, good. As long as, as, long as the story's good, who cares? Yeah. Who fucking- they, exactly. could have a, they could have a dog play Red Sonia. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Did you guys ever see the original Red Sonia movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> as Conan in it as well? I've, I don't think I've watched it. I've watched the Conan movies. That for, tells you right there that it doesn't matter who fucking plays it. It's probably yeah. going to be shit. So yeah. hopefully this one's a lot better. Well, you think about that. Like, that's a perfect point, right? Like, those movies back in the day, like those old superhero or like comic book or just action movies right like they cast somebody because they looked the part and then the movies were fucking shit because they were horrible fucking actors right Right. so like why not cast somebody who's like gonna maybe bring some fuck something like to red sonia like 
somebody who's like a good actor and can like really do well, like uh, taking this character in and, and redefining it. And like, yeah. again, I don't give a shit about Red, Red Sonia. I barely know anything about her, but you know what? If this is a, if this is a well-produced movie with good acting, I'm going to be more likely to watch it than if it was some smoking hot, uh, you know, red haired Amazon blue eyed woman. Like I, it doesn't matter to me who gives a fuck. Right, and it's not like we're looking back in an old movie and like talking shit about the CGI on the movie or anything like that. It's just the movies weren't good. They they relied on well known actors or things like that to carry a movie, and that doesn't always mean it's going to be good because that actor may not be right for that role. I get Conan like Arnold Schwarzenegger as Conan physically is like the shit, but yeah. but him as any role. But he's like the Ozzy Osbourne of, of acting. Like he's right. not, not all there, just kind of like it. Exactly. I mean, every role he's ever played is not. It's just because of the way he looks. I mean, no, I'm going to say that Last Action Hero is a great fucking movie. It is. <laughs> it is. That's true. I mean, wasn't it like Terminator? Like the reason ter- like he doesn't have any lines in the first one is because like he couldn't like say the lines essentially they were just like all right we're just going to cut your lines and you're just going to be like <laughs> you're only going to say like three or four things the entire movie and that's it i wouldn't doubt that but i don't know for sure <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure it is <clears throat> like and again not like whatever there's a there's somebody who became a a, a governor of of your great state there over uh, on the on the west coast from couldn't speak english to action star all the way through Hey, um, and now, now, fucking Caitlyn Jenner is um, running for governor of California. So <laughs> talk, we, talk we about can have a whole new podcast about how <laughs> California. Talk about a shit show. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, no. I, I uh, Red Sonia, like I, yeah. Again, I don't care about it, and um, but I, good. The more, the more comic related stuff that comes out the better as far as i'm concerned so if we're talking trailers i mean it, we're we're just about almost an hour and a half in but I, I i i wanted to touch on um the new marvel trailer that they put out right i saw this pop up and then like saw it popped up on instagram and like went to youtube typed it in and saw the eternals trailer and i'm like oh this is gonna be like i don't give a fuck about the eternals <laughs> at all but i've been waiting to see what it looks like and uh, it wasn't an Eternals trailer by any means. No. You know what it like? There's there's a whole of five seconds of Eternals, and they're in street clothes. Like, yeah, the Eternals looks like the uh, the fucking Inhumans TV show so far. <laughs> I, I think was there was there a meme about that? I think I saw like. Oh, I don't know. If it, if there was, I should have wrote that shit. Cause, <laughs> yeah, I I I I don't like Angelina Jolie very much to begin with like she's an okay actress but she just like collects fucking children like it's going out of style and um i so i'm not a fan of her too much but um yeah it's there's a lot of characters in that movie and it that trailer showed you absolutely nothing whatsoever um and so no idea so i i heard somebody say like and it, it was an interesting thought. I don't know how much I agree with it or, 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 or not, but that like out of all the properties in Marvel, like they're always like this far out, like especially since the movie was supposed to come out last year, they've always given like quite a bit of like there would be like stills of like, hey, this is what – here's like the movie poster. Here's what they look like in costume. Like here's Iron Man. Here's Captain America. Here's like Black Panther. Like they always have done that, and they haven't done it with this. And like, is it because like they're getting ready to just like go big with this, and like they're really gonna like go hard with that? And I know this isn't based on um, like the Kirby stuff. This is based on the Neil Gaiman stuff, which I don't know who the artist was at the, at that time. But it's 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 more based in <laughs> it's not that like crazy cosmic kirby shit it's like more like a sci-fi-esque style thing um so i don't know i I wonder if that's the thing like i mean again they shouldn't have just shoehorned that into all this other bullshit that they put together but 
I don't know. Maybe I'm just being hopeful. Maybe they're just struggling because uh, no one goes to the movies anymore. Well, it looks like they're trying to change that. <clears throat> um, and and then so on top of that, you had like Wakanda Forever and Marvels, which Marvels is kind of interesting to me because I I I didn't like Captain Marvel the first one. I don't care about the character, um, but like there that opens the potential for like all these other characters, right? You have like Spectrum who's been set up. Um, you know, spec from from WandaVision, R- Rambo, and then like people have been talking about like Blue Marvel, and then like there's the whole thing about the Ultimates, right? And like, so like, could this be leading into that? I I don't know if that it is, but that gets me kind of excited. Like the Ultimates, you have Reed Richards, you have like a lot of the people who exist in the comic, right, or in this universe right now. Well, they there's been photos of uh, Camilla Miss, Miss Marvel yeah. already. So I, I and in that logo you have her X at the end of it. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I really think it's going to be a way for them to take Captain Marvel, Monica Rambo, and Miss Marvel and put them into a movie relating to all three of them. You know, because realistically monica is gonna have to end up running into captain marvel because she has such a past with her right. it's, gonna, it's gonna be a confronting situation where she's like you know you fucking left and the world took took a shit and where were you and you know so I, I think they have they do have quite a bit of ways to tie in at least two out of those three characters yeah, but yeah. we'll see where the tv show for miss marvel goes you know yeah yeah they'll probably go that route you'll have like those three characters miss marvel but i i want to see blue marvel <laughs> i want the ultimates <laughs> do you think we're gonna get a thunderbolts after captain america or uh yeah falcon winter soldier or captain america winter soldier i mean i think if that's coming it's either gonna be a i mean i guess my my big question would like to preface that would be like they're going to have more TV or Disney Plus series, right? Are they going to be serial or are they going to be like one season and then it's done, right? So like like either way, I don't know. Like maybe we get a Thunderbolt series or do we get a Thunderbolt movie? It's so hard to fucking know. Like – I, I feel like they're still sticking with like a lot of the main like Guardians 3 isn't coming out till to the end of 2023 like yeah. if Thunderbolts was just set up now to only come out 4 years plus from now like that there's no way right so I think if anything they throw that in as like a maybe a one of those lead up series to like I think they're going to they're going to continue to just hit the movies with all like the big name characters. They're going to continue. I mean, you could say the Guardians weren't, you could say obviously or ter- the Eternals aren't, but like they have Thor, they have Fantastic Four, they have X-Men like I don't know. I I I don't think we see Thunderbolts like we do the Suicide Squad in DC right, right. now. Well, yeah. cuz we still we still have Hawkeye that is a show coming out. We saw Moon Knight. That's a show coming out. You know, it's a lot of other things that weren't necessarily, they were slightly talked about, but then when this whole phase four video came out, those weren't talked about. No. Blade wasn't talked about. Right. You know, there was quite a few things that we already know about as a, you know, society or whatever that they've talked about. And actually, you know, like Moon Knight has been, has started shooting. <laughs> Hawkeye's been shooting for a while. You know, Miss yeah. Marvel's now shooting. So She Hulk is also been announced, but hasn't started. Right. You know what I mean? There's a lot. Yeah, I I think they keep both separate. I think I think you have these one off, potentially maybe a few season um, serial, uh, you know, shows, and then you have the movies. And I think those worlds maybe cross over. Um, a few times, but I, I don't think it's going to be like all of a sudden there's like the, I, I don't know, whatever new character, like the white vision is like, 
is like a major MCU Avenger. I, I don't know. Maybe it's I'm just wrong. Avengers, man. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, I mean, how are they going to do all this too, right? If we looked at all of this and said they're going to connect all of this, we're looking at the next fucking 20 years. And that's without the X-Men and the FF. So, like, that's sure. not going to there's, – there's no way that's going to happen. Like, yeah. it just can't. Not in the same way they've done it. I, Everyone's I, thinking about all these other teams, like, you know, Young Avengers and West Coast Avengers and this and that. And it's like well, they're building so much – at the same time, do you think they ever have a chance to actually put these teams together? You know, I don't think so. I, I mean, I think, I think again, like one of the things I was, and again, I, I don't know who I was talking to this about, but like, I think like if you, you're building up the young Avengers, clearly they have all of them already. They've already appeared or have series coming out. Hawkeye, Miss Marvel, Patriot, um, the twins, like, I mean, I know there's other ones I'm forgetting, but, uh, Riri Williams has Ironheart. Um, I mean, it, it's, you could potentially get miles maybe one day. Right. But maybe that stays in the TV shows maybe. And then maybe they have like the new captain America and, the new Black Panther and Thor and some of the other people. And there's like a new adventures type thing. Like I could see them existing in parallels, like one's TV, one's movies, and they kind of intersect, but I don't see like Thunderbolts and West coast Avengers and new Avengers and young Avengers and <laughs> fantastic four and X-Men and mutants and all this shit happening. Like I heard somebody say something about, how they think Wolverine is going to be in the Marvels because, or the mutants are going to be in the Marvels because rogue gets her power from captain Marvel. That's how she gets her power. And so now that's how the mutants are being introduced. And I'm like, wow, that is a fucking stretch. <laughs> you know, I think everyone thought, you know, when they saw, <clears throat> excuse me, when they saw, uh, the new or the recast <laughs> uh, Quicksilver in WandaVision, that they were like, this is it. This is the X-Men. And I was like, you guys fucking need to go out. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, this is not how this is going to work. You know? Uh, but, I I'll tell you what, if that's that uh, that stork ended up being Mephisto, I would have sold a certain comic book and made a lot of a lot of money. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so I so I just want to end. I got one question that I uh, I think is kind of fun. Because well, uh, we could go on for days with all. I this. know, I know, I know, and we're we're at like an hour and a half now, and um, uh, again, like I could continue to talk about this forever, but um, so. Out of all those movies in that trailer that were announced, right? You had Wakanda Forever and Marvels being the newest like titles. Blade wasn't in it, but you have got um, God and Thunder, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Three, Spider Man, all those movies. Yeah, from Black Widow to Guardians. If you could watch any of those right now, like you were allowed to just watch one of them right now. Which one do you think you would pick out of all of those? Go ahead, Alan. Uh, I would say Doctor Strange. Yeah. I, I, I want to see Doctor Strange. Either that or Thor. Because I, I like, uh, what's the guy who directs? Um, Taika Waititi. Yeah, I, I like him a lot. I actually uh, started re-watching, um, what the fuck was that movie? Uh, uh, what we do in the shadows? No, uh, Jojo Rabbit. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, but I think he's I think he's hilarious. He's he's a great director, but I also just like the uh, I like Doctor Strange. I, I like the casting. I like, and I think the the whole multiverse thing. I, I'm not excited. Like I, as much as I like Tom Holland as Spider Man, I'm not excited about them bringing back Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire and the guy who plays fucking uh, Doctor Octopus and Jamie Fox as like as a Electro, I'm just not excited for all that. It seems way too much for a fucking movie. Like I'm, I'm not pumped on that. Plus, I get to see Natalie Portman in in Thor, so you can't go wrong with fucking Natalie Portman. I had to look at me. Just... <laughs> Which is funny because the 
the Doctor Strange movie, the only reason I would look forward to that is because of WandaVision and knowing that they're going to end up tying it yeah. together. Well, yeah. assuming they are. I don't know. They're is assuming, it, but, it, that that's a, like I hated the first Doctor Strange movie. Like I didn't hate it, but like it was just like I I, I want it was one, a weird man as a magician. Yeah, I wanted it to be so much better than it was. Like I don't think I would care as much about that movie if it wasn't for WandaVision. And I mean Sam Raimi's behind this one. He didn't do the first one. I don't did he? No, yeah. right? So that also is like this is a Sam Raimi movie. Like this is going to be fucking awesome. Like I'm I have high hopes for it. It's going to be obnoxious. There's going to be a lot of girls in the corner just like <laughs> a lot. They're going to see Dr. Strange like walking down the streets and having his yeah. fingers. So, Have you guys gone back and watched those Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies? They are the most B-rated, high-budget <laughs> movies ever. And it's because Sam Raimi only knows how to make B-rate movies. Not that that is bad. I don't know. I love it. Every one of his movies. <laughs> but it's exactly what he knows how to do. I think I I don't know I maybe it's a nostalgia thing but it has me I have watched those movies a lot and like I feel like I'm excited for it for that reason I didn't I was like also the, a fan I of Tobey Maguire as Spider Man yeah I liked him as Spider Man I thought he was a great Peter Parker more than anything right yeah. and like I um I didn't like the tone of Doctor Strange so I liked Doctor Strange in Adve in Avengers like in Infinity War and um. And, I mean, end game, but mostly Affinity War, like way better than his own, you know, like the 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 first movie. Um, I just didn't like the tone of it. Like I thought he came off more cocky than I don't I don't know. Yeah, it was just like a cocky magician. It was just wasn't very it was like a really shitty Hellblazer <laughs> that's not nearly as cool. <laughs> um but I still, I, I don't know. I think I have to say Guardians. I I have a feeling that shit is just going to go down. It's the last one. There's going to be so much that happens in all those end credit scenes up to that movie. And I loved the first two Guardians so fucking much. I thought they were great. And uh, I know the second one has its, its, people have its judgments about it. But I think that's the one. The interesting part with that is the fact that um, God of Love or God of Thunder um, is coming out before Guardians 3, right? Yes. But we left Thor with the Guardians the last time we saw him. Right. So are they going to be out of time, timeline-wise? I kind of feel like that's going to be the situation because when you look at Guardians 1 and 2, they're supposed to be placed back-to-back. Yeah, well, last time we saw movie. Thor, he was uh, giving Valkyrie um, like leadership of uh, fucking uh, yeah everything. Then Asgard. Yeah. Then yeah, he, Asgard. He, yeah, he hopped on the ship with with uh, Star Wars. Sure. That, that's and right. I told him that shit about who's the leader and this and that. You know. Yeah. yeah. And I so, I mean, I think well, like if you think about the Loki trailer, right, uh, or Loki the Loki show. I just watched the. The new trailer again that came out that wasn't really a new trailer it just had like 30 seconds that was new um yeah i got sucked into watching i mean because... it, I, I mean i'm excited about that show but it's all about hey when you took the tesseract and disappeared in endgame you fuck shit up like and now we're gonna try and fix it yeah panel uh, uh oh that's not the right one um as guardians of the galaxy i i that's like the Donnie the the Kate's thing that's going that happened or is going on was going on. Um, I think that's definitely possible. I uh, there's definitely going to be a. I think Thor is not done. Like I think we see him past Phase Four. Like I think he's going to be important through more than this. And I think you don't think so. Oh, I think they're going to give it to fucking Natalie Portman, bro. Yeah, I, I think maybe he's like you know like. Uh... Like Robert Downey Jr. and fucking Chris Evans, I think he's probably done, and they're kind of slowly phasing him out. Like he's not as important. I mean, I mean he's yeah, been I'm surprised he's still here, to be honest with you, because like you know, Thor three is the only reason he has a Thor four because Thor two, the Dark World, no, it was horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. I did like the Dark Elves. I mean, besides that, that was a horrible fucking movie. 
It was yeah. just uh, it was bad. I would say that I'm probably most excited out of all those movies for Black Panther 2 yeah. only because I'm curious to where it's going to go. Right. You know, they I've had certain people like I've seen articles about people that are like if you don't recast T'Challa, then it just throws his legacy away. And I'm like, I don't know if I believe that. And then you have the other group that's like, if his sister doesn't take up the mantle and be Black Panther, then I don't want to watch it. Well, and so I'm really curious to see like the idea of where they go with that. I think they're, they're in a tough position and they're not going to satisfy everybody, right? They, You know that. I, I do agree. I, I'll agree with the fact that like it's a kingdom. It's the kingdom of Wakanda and it's Wakanda forever, right? There has to be a king or a queen. There has to be a leader. Like they're not going to just do uh, um, uh, uh, what's the name of the, the, the Dorma or uh, Melange or whatever. I, I, I know I butchered that, but Melange. yeah, whatever it is. Right. Um, they're not just going to make a movie about that or about like, but how do you, but how do you I mean do you, there's well, no I, I don't want I mean I wouldn't want to see them recast no no I think you go with Shuri like that's the only logical yeah, thing yeah. how do you oh. kill off my Panther no what do you mean you how have you mean? to you ha in the films you have to have him actually oh die yeah because yeah. there's no explanation why he's not there anymore as, as opposed to him it. dying off panel yeah that's he's right. like yeah. he's like all right guys see you later and then yeah. he's like flies off on a jet and you never see him again so like you're saying that it makes so you're saying that's that's the harder part over ah uh, yeah I don't know how do you do that I maybe maybe you just tie it into what like you like it's relatively topical and it's like an actual you have like a I mean th there's no way to do it but do it off panel like off uh off screen right you can't kill him in screen unless he's in the unless he's in the the costume you know so you have him in the costume and something happens he has a fight he dies and they pay this huge tribute to essentially chadwick boseman right i mean that's what it would be we're gonna get a cgi chadwick boseman at least for no, a portion no. because that's the only way they can do it you know what i mean uh, there i highly doubt they're gonna be like oh yeah he died in the middle of this last movie and we don't know how to show you that. So he's just not here anymore. Like it's not going to happen. But I mean, they could have him just in the suit and then like you maybe, I, I don't know. Like shot from the back kind of situation. You mean? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I, mean, well, I guess they, you're right with, with the helmet on. Yeah. He could have the helmet yeah. on or yeah. it could be him in the suit with, yeah. Maybe they have a shot of him from the back or I, I don't, I don't know that that's a, right. uh, I, I think you'll get maybe a CGI. Yeah. Because what whenever Paul like whenever Paul Walker died, didn't they use like his brother and they kinda like CGI'd his face and then I mean even fucking Mandalorian, we got a CGI young Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I don't I, I don't know that he It's a sticky situation, like either way. Like what do you I mean, how do you explain him dying in the movie when there was you know, he was just there and then who takes it? I mean, is it going to be like kind of underwhelming because Shuri wasn't? I mean, you get a lot of Shuri in the first Black Panther movie, but you only get a little bit of her in what as an in game. Yeah. yeah, I don't, and I, you know, it's funny because I didn't like. I just in my head assumed that they would tie this in. I didn't even think about this whole this whole part of it. I was just like, it's either Shuri or or a replacement, or they're 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 recasting him. I, yeah. I didn't even think about the fact of like how are they going to explain if they go to Shuri. Uh, that's yeah, that's. But I I don't know. Like I'd almost rather them. I guess right. Like if we're looking at the worst of both, I'd rather them fail or do a shitty job of like oh this is what happened and here's 15 minutes of him dying and then here's Shuri becoming Black Panther than them try and just like hey we're not going to say anything smoke and mirrors here's a new person. 
you know, like yeah, I get it. Like they do in a lot of like uh, TV shows where it's just like the new season, it's just like a new character. Yep, it just starts so a new person just... playing that character that has been through the whole show, and it's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, who yeah. the fuck is this person? It's like, oh, and you walk in, you're like, oh, my brother T'Challa. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like yeah, well, that's awesome. who is that guy? <laughs> I keep hearing too that they're gonna bring uh, Killmonger back for uh, Black Panther two, which it's kind of weird. Also, like he also died. <laughs> yeah, but like on screen. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I, I like Michael B. Jordan, but I mean, it doesn't really. I mean, I, I know in the comic books he does get resurrected and shit, but it just, I don't know. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't have to happen. Yeah. I'd like to see some Namor action in Black Panther. I want them to go like into the ocean and him be like. Cause that's like one of the best. Like, <clears throat> I I love maybe, that. Whole, maybe he uh, kills. Maybe he kills Black Panther and fucking Shuri takes over. Yeah, maybe. I mean, there's also the whole thing about like Black Panther was the king of the dead for a long time. So there is some world where that that falls into play. Where like he's in the. I I think they call it the Nether Realm. I'm not. I for, I'm, I forget off the top of my head, but. That whole thing where he's like married to Storm and he's like the king of the undead and that's when he's f battling Namor and all that shit happens. So like it's, I don't know. Uh, uh, they'll have to figure that out. I don't write movies, so I don't fucking know. But I'd much rather see. And I I agree. I'm excited for that movie. Um, I'd much rather Shuri though than a recast. We just get like five more uh, Black Panther movies with uh, Chadwick CGI. <laughs> or just, so or, or yeah. just like him in the suit and you think it's just him. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree that Namor or the Sub Submariner would make sense in an FF, but I think you're going to see like, you're probably going to see Kang, right? With the whole Ant Man thing. And. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of time travel, so that makes sense. And then I, I think I don't think you get Doom so quickly. Like I think Doom is going to be the end of the Fantastic Four shit. So that's like what Phase Five, end of Phase Five, Phase Six. Thirty years from now, when they thirty years from now when they start. Um, I mean, he he definitely makes sense because he appears like he's a historically famous he appeared in fantastic four he's in the fantastic four he gets down with sue richards <laughs> steals reed richards wife but i mean i think more like now and, and that you have the whole invaders thing too so that's a whole nother story but i think more recently you have a lot of this like the big like hard hitters like the illuminati and he's part of like the black he runs with black panther and reed richards as like he is, he has him and 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 T'Challa have a lot of beef and I think that they're gonna focus on that. Yeah. All right. Yep. This is the longest one we've done. It's almost two hours. So uh We are thank talking you. too much. Yeah, well I don't, I, mean, I don't like you guys that much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can talk to y'all every day in the chat, but in real life, a person I don't want to see your face. That's fair. I get it. I get it. So next week, we're going to talk about Deadly Class. Tom, you want to take us away? Yes, we're going to talk about Deadly Class. If you have never read Deadly Class, do yourself a fucking favor. Um, all three of us have read Deadly Class Volume 1, um, if I'm not mistaken. But um, we're going to read it again because it deserves to be read again. If you've never read it, go out and grab it read those six issues that volume one is uh, before next Wednesday. So you guys can talk about it with us. We would love to hear any questions you have about that, um, even regarding the TV show, because reading those, uh, I think it's volume one and two, uh, pretty much sums up season one of the TV show. Um, should, should, I'm sorry to cut you off. Should we do one and two or? I think we should. It doesn't hurt. I'm down. There's no reason because with when it when it comes to the TV show only ran one season, but it does cover the first two volumes of yeah. the book um, in a slightly interesting order too. There's a little things that kind of jump around more than the TV show. And again, this is another thing where I actually started. I started on the book, only read a short portion of it, and then watched the show. Liked it so much, I went back to read the book, and I like the show a fucking lot. 
Um, but it's on Peacock if you've never seen it before. Um, if you need my login, just message me and maybe I'll give it <laughs> to <laughs> But anyways, uh, go read volume one and two of Deadly Class before next Wednesday. Do yourself a favor and read I Kill Giants and go watch the movie. The movie is on Hulu. It's an hour and a half long. I know you've got enough time to put your goddamn dick out of your hands. Watch the movie. Read the book. It's totally worth doing, um, even if we talked how much we didn't care for it. Um, <laughs> so go <laughs> do that. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to this channel before, do it now. Like this video. Go ahead and like all the other videos and all the videos of our friends. Subscribe to all of their channels. The Grail Keepers, uh, Fuzz's Hot Sauce Reviews, uh, Talks with Jay is coming back in June, yeah. I believe. It June is. or July? Yep. Yeah, something like that. He, he's still putting out. Um, he's still putting out videos too, all the time. All the time. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead. We're going to. Um, I, when I say we, I mean this guy over here. I don't know which way he is on your computer, but he's going to put a bunch of links to all these people that I'm mentioning in this video's bio. So you can go check out those uh, those videos. Subscribe to all of those channels. Make sure you subscribe to yours. And always, always remember, the Masters of Evil. Fucking hate you. Yeah, what's up? So